The FDA has officially authorized new COVID boosters that for the first time target the Omicron variants. And I'm so excited, because this means we can finally fight Omicron just eight months after everyone got it. Yes! <laughs> and in case you're counting, that is now the fourth COVID shot, which means one more, and we all get a free sandwich, yeah! <laughs> Meanwhile, in climate news, the west coast of America is currently experiencing a record-breaking heat wave with temperatures in some cities topping 115 degrees. Yeah, it is so hot in California right now that people are begging Harry Styles to spit on them. Ah, please, <laughs> please, Harry, please. Oh, in international news, it is now being reported that due to global sanctions, Russia is being forced to buy ammunition from North Korea. Yeah, which I think we can all agree means you're pretty desperate. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you, you have to go to North Korea because no one else will sell it. It's, it's like only a matter of time before Putin can only get haircuts from North Korea. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> Nowhere else. <laughs> All right, but let's move on to some of the biggest stories of the day. Starting with the only man in America whose scrapbooking hobby could land him in prison, Donald J. <laughs> Trump. Yeah, the J stands for January 6th. There have been uh, some major developments in the FBI's investigation into America's former president. So let's catch up on all of it in another installment of America's Most Tremendously Wanted. <laughs> I raided the broom closet where Donald Trump was keeping America's most important national security secrets, we've all been wondering what exactly Trump was hiding there. And over the weekend, we finally got a detailed rundown of what the FBI took away. There were 31 documents labeled confidential, there were 54 labeled secret, and 18 labeled top secret. Yeah. And even better than that, agents found those documents intermingled in the same boxes as magazine clippings <laughs> and clothing. <laughs> so, I guess Trump has a legal problem and a hoarding problem? Like, what is... <laughs> it's almost like after the FBI is done with Trump, they need to send in Marie Kondo, you know, just to be like, <laughs> does this 1987 copy of Playboy spark joy, Donald? <laughs> it does, it sparks so much joy, so much joy. <laughs> but even more concerning is that the FBI also found dozens of classified folders that were empty. Which obviously raises the question, where are the documents from the folders? Are they in other boxes? Did he lend them to Saudi Arabia? <laughs> or maybe, maybe it's more innocent, yeah. Maybe Trump just keeps a bunch of folders labeled classified so he can give them to friends with photocopies of his butt inside. I mean, that's a good joke. <laughs> that's a good joke. You're like, what's in here? <laughs> it's also possible the intelligence community didn't trust Trump with classified information, so they just gave him empty folders. We don't, we don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it could just be like, sir, these uh, documents are so secret, we made them invisible. He's just like, incredible, just like all the love letters Melania sends me. I get it, <laughs> totally get it. <laughs> but nobody knows what Trump was doing with these files and folders. And now, it might be a lot longer until we find out. The criminal investigation into those classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago is temporarily on hold as a result of this 24-page order where a Florida federal judge granted former President Trump's request that authorizes the appointment of a special master, an independent observer to review what the FBI seized from the Trump estate last month. The special master would separate any items that might be protected by claims of attorney-client privilege or executive privilege. The judge said a deadline of Friday for both sides in this case, Trump and the DOJ, to propose a list of candidates they want to be special master. Now, the judge also said in this ruling that DOJ cannot use these documents at all as part of its criminal investigation until this review is completed. Yeah, that's right. A judge in Florida has decided to appoint an in independent observer to go through all of the documents and determine which ones are off limits to investigators. And that person is called a special master which I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard it, it sounded pretty cool. <laughs> it's like, Donald Trump is getting a special mess. I was like, he's about to learn Kung Fu? <laughs> and it was gonna be like, hmm, I am your special master, and you, Donald, are my students. Like, great, can you teach me chopsticks? <laughs> and what's gonna be really interesting is who they pick for this job, because the judge gave each side until Friday 
to submit a list of suggestions together, right? So basically the judge is going, Trump, you send us a list of who you think should review the documents, and then like the Justice Department, you do the same thing, and then I guess the judge is hoping that they'll overlap? <laughs> but I, I don't know. I feel like the Department of Justice is gonna submit the names of like former attorney generals and FBI directors, and then the list from Trump's side is gonna be like, Jared, the Hamburglar, <laughs> a paper shredder on top of a toilet, you know? <laughs> but you know, once again, Donald Trump has exposed the part of America that I'm willing to bet nobody knew existed. Nobody. Like, did you know about a special master? Any of you? Huh? <laughs> I didn't even know there was an option. I've watched 10 million hours of Law and Order. <laughs> I know about subpoenas. I know about breaking the chain of custody, objection sustained, overruled, sidebar in my chambers, but not once have I heard the term special master. <laughs> but once again, thanks to Trump, because of his hard work and dedication to doing crimes, we've all learned something new today. <laughs> And I say thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. That's right. But let's move on to some international news from the American Trump to the British one. Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Back in July, he was forced to resign due to a long list of scandals. You know, he was having parties during his own COVID lockdown. He was receiving shady loans. He was promoting people that he knew were accused of sexual harassment, you name it. He did it, he's like a one-man Shonda Rhimes show. So finally, <laughs> his party forced Boris to resign, and today, they appointed the new leader of the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom has a new prime minister this morning. Liz Truss officially took over from Boris Johnson today after meeting with Queen Elizabeth at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. We have huge reserves of talent, of energy, and determination. I am confident that together, we can ride out the storm. Truss inherits a nightmare. War in Europe, a biting cost of living crisis. The country braced for a winter of potential blackouts and fuel poverty. Yeah, once again, the United Kingdom is bringing a woman into power only when things are really shit. <laughs> yeah, they do this all the time. Margaret Thatcher, Theresa May, Mary Poppins, the list is endless. <laughs> That's why it feels good to live in a country like America. It is so feminist, it won't put a woman in charge ever, <laughs> just in case things get really bad. You're welcome, ladies. You're welcome. And, you know, I gotta say, it's weird how the British system just springs a new prime minister on you. Like, like you know when, when they pick the new Doctor Who, there's all this speculation and debate and the whole country's weighing in on it, but for the new prime minister, they're just like, meet Liz, she's running the country now. <laughs> So, uh, I wish the best of luck to uh, Prime Minister Truce, and uh, from now on, until she, I guess, resigns in disgrace? <laughs> no, because that's what happens, you know? That's what happens to British Prime Ministers. They never get to the end of their term. You just serve until some shit goes down, <laughs> and you have to apologize and leave. <laughs> in fact, you know what, to make things simpler, the new Prime Minister should just start their term with an apology speech, you know? <laughs> it is... Truly an honor to be taking this job that I will be forced to resign from within a year. I'm excited to lead this nation and I'm ashamed for the terrible things that I will do that force me from office. But until that happens, I have many ideas for this country. I want to rebuild the roads. I want to expand national health care. And, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> there's the scandal already. It's been a privilege of a lifetime to serve you. Thanks everyone. Cheerio. Bye-bye everyone. Bye. All right, finally. Let's move on to some big entertainment news. Amazon Prime Video has announced that its new Lord of the Rings prequel series is its most watched program ever, with more than 25 million viewers checking out the show on its first day. Yeah, but it turns out some of those people might be hate watching. Amazon is suspending reviews of its new Lord of the Rings series on Rotten Tomatoes. It says the 72-hour hold is to make sure the reviews for Rings of Power are legit and prevent internet trolls from bringing down their score. Amazon says reviews are being dragged down by fans who are upset about the show's diverse cast, which includes black actors playing elves and dwarves. These viewers say it's unrealistic for Tolkien's creatures to be non-white. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this is a tough one. <laughs> This is a tough one. I mean, on the one hand, everyone wants diversity in the shows that we create, but on the other hand, gotta admit, it's a bit unrealistic <laughs> to say that there were black people in this white guy's imagination, you know? I mean... <laughs> I mean, 
I can get on board with a show or a world where magical creatures cast spells and fight undead armies for control of a piece of jewelry that can turn them into gods, but if those creatures have a tan, it's just not believable anymore. <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> no, for real. This is... This is so hypocritical. You're gonna get mad about seeing a black dwarf in Lord of the Rings, but you're fine with seeing a Kevin Hart movie. Be consistent! <laughs> He's so tiny. <laughs> also, by the way, I don't understand why people are this angry. It's not like all the characters turn black, all right? There's one black dwarf, a couple of black elves. It's not like the NBA, calm down. <laughs> People were like, oh, there's black ones. Yes. You know, it's the same way people were losing their shit because of the one black guy in House of Dragons. You know, people losing them. Oh, well, it only takes one to lower the property values, you know? <laughs> the House of Dragon used to be worth 400,000. Now I don't know anymore. <laughs> and I know what people are saying. People are saying that the books are supposed to be based on medieval Europe. So having black characters isn't realistic. But guys, nobody's watching Lord of the Rings for realism, okay? <laughs> They're watching it because they didn't have sex in high school. That's the only reason. <laughs> It's not realistic. <laughs> I will say this, though. I will say this. Apart from the racism thing, I kind of agree. I don't think it makes sense to have black characters in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I said it. The whole series is about seeing danger and then running <laughs> towards it. <laughs> That's some white people shit. <laughs> The reason, the reason there were no black people in Middle Earth is because they saw the giant eye talking out of a volcano and they were like, oh, hell no. <laughs> we are moving to Africa, cause this shit here, uh-uh, no, no, we do not need to be here. We're going to Africa, we're totally safe. All right, that's it for the headlines, but before we go to a break, it's time to check in on all the latest social media trends with our very own Ronnie Chang, everybody! <laughs> You guys want to hear some social media? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You guys ready to lose a few IQ points? Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, first up, uh, what's trending is Lord of the Rings, or as, as I like to call it, Game of Thrones without the incest. I mean, <laughs> look, I know we're supposed to be woke any woke on this show, you know, elf diversity, stop Mordor hate or whatever, but look, can we just give this one to white people, all right? Let's diversify the real places first, and then we can worry about the white fantasy places later, okay? <laughs> that being said, where the f are the Asians, okay? Because... <laughs> Middle Earth, Narnia, the West Wing, no Asians? No Asians. The closest thing we have to Asians in American fantasy is Spock in Star Trek, okay? <laughs> yeah, he's Asian. I know he's white, but he's Asian. Okay, he's super smart, he dresses like an emperor, he's got a bowl haircut, and he knows the pressure points in the neck, right? <laughs> Live long and prosper, he even talks like Confucius, okay? I just want to see some Asian elves. <laughs> oh yeah, and what else, what else is trending? Uh, oh yeah, everyone's uh, on the internet trying to uh, figure out whether Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine at a movie premiere. Yeah, and by the way, this one Asian here, one Asian here, <laughs> there's more Asians in this Harry Styles spinning video than six Lord of the Rings movies and a TV series. I, you know, Ronnie, I actually, I actually saw this trending online and I saw the video and, like, wh what, what happened here? Dude, I don't know, Trevor. You think I care about this celebrity crap? You think I stay up at night reading about how Florence Pugh was upset with Olivia Wilde? Or you think I spent hours trying to figure out why Olivia said Shia LaBeouf was fired when really he quit? Like, what kind of pathetic loser would be up at 4 a.m. reading about how Jason Sudeikis served Olivia Wilde divorce papers on stage at a movie's press conference? I mean, <laughs> what sad piece of shit reads article after article about how Olivia's now dating Harry Styles and we all get slowly sucked into this Florence Puniverse? <laughs> it's actually disgustingly stupid how much time people are spending on this, all right? Get a life. You, you know, for someone who says they don't know a lot about this, it really seemed like you uh, know a lot about this. Like you. <laughs> You just took us through the whole story. So, so did, did Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine or not? Dude, I don't know, and I don't care, all right? What I do know is that most people in the world would love to have Harry Styles spit on them, all right? 
anyone in this audience would open their mouth and gladly have Harry Styles spit down their gullet any day of the week, all right? Yeah, all of you out there will open your mouth and say, please feed me, King Styles. Feed me with your sliver right into my mouth. Who here wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want that? Because people love Harry. That's ridiculous. People love Harry. No, no. one can do, he can't do any wrong. Oh, Have you no. seen what these desperate people tweet no, about him? No, Look at this. Look at this desperate person here. <laughs> Top three One Direction members in order. Harry Styles, Harry Styles, Harry Styles. Styles stand for life, all right? That's what these f***ing losers are saying on the internet. Desperate much? He's not gonna spit in your mouth, Trevor. All right. First of all, you don't know that. Second of all, it was just a joke, okay? You're right, you're right. But you know what I do know, okay? I know that all this shit is great publicity. Okay, I don't even know about this movie, but now I know about this movie. It's giving me an idea about how we should be promoting this show. No. Okay, Trevor? No. Trevor? No. Just hear me out here. No. I'll spit in your mouth, no. and then you serve me with divorce papers. No, no, no. And then we start no. dating. Don't cheer him on. Run and